Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris and this is UDM Pro Complete Setup Video 7, where we're going to be talking about Unify Network Client VPN Setup. Now, what is Client VPN Setup? Essentially, that's when you have the ability to use your phone or some other client device from somewhere else in the world and VPN or create a secure network tunnel from that client device into your Unify network. Now this can be useful for all sorts of different things, including the ability to connect to resources that you have on your local network, like if you have any sort of web server running or file server that you wanna have access to when you are remotely away from your network. Uh, that's what this client VPN stuff can be used for. Now for this series, I'm not gonna be setting up a site-to-site -site VPN. That's where you're doing a firewall-to-firewall -firewall connection instead of a device to firewall connection. And the reason I'm not doing a site-to-site -site VPN video is just because there's so many different variations and flavors of site-to-site -site VPN possible. We could be doing Unify to Unify, or Unify to Edge Router, or Unify to Cisco, right? And so there's just way too many to cover, and they all are, have their own little sort of differences and nuances. So for this series, we're just gonna stick to a simple L2TP client to server, or client to firewall VPN. Now, before we get into that, if you guys are enjoying this video series, make sure you give me a like down below and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for more videos just like this one. It's absolutely free and it really, really helps out the channel. Also remember to follow Crosstalk Solutions on Twitter at Crosstalk SOL. And if you're looking to just buy me a beer, well, you can do that with the link down below in the description. Okay, so here we are at the Unify dashboard and in the last video we had done a dual WAN failover setup where I was using two different NATed IP addresses uh, in my Unify interface. The reason that I was doing that for my primary WAN is mostly because I don't want to have to mask out my WAN IP address for the entire video series, right? So having a an internal non-WAN routable IP address is just easier for me in terms of editing. but. For this video, I had to set a static IP address on the outside interface of my UDM Pro. As you can see here, WAN IP1 ends in a .29. So that is a WAN IP address ending in .29, which we're going to use as part of this video. Now, if your own UDM Pro has a DHCP IP address from your ISP, you want to make sure that it is not a private IP address. You want to make sure that you are in what's called bridge mode with your ISP. So the actual routable WAN IP address that your ISP is giving out to you, whether it's a static IP or a dynamic IP, is on the actual external interface of your UDM Pro. Or you have to know how to port forward through to the UDM Pro. So we're getting a little bit more complicated than I wanna cover in this video. Bottom line is, if you're running a UDM Pro, your WAN connection should be in a routable internet IP address and not a private IP address where there might be a dual NAT situation uh, going on with your network. And if you're not sure what I mean, just look up bridge mode on Google uh, with your ISP's name and you can very quickly determine whether you are in bridge mode or not. Okay, so to set up our WAN, we're gonna to wanna to create a new network. So let's go over here to settings, and then we're gonna click networks, and we wanna say add new network. So right now we have our three networks. We have our LAN, our guest network, and our IoT network. We're now adding a new network. So we're gonna say add new network. We're gonna call this client VPN. And then under VPN settings, we want to choose remote access. And it says enables users to securely connect to your network from a remote location. So let's go ahead and click that. For the VPN protocol, go ahead and choose L2TP. In fact, that's your only option. So you might as well choose that one. And then we need a pre-shared secret key. In my case, I'm just going to do all lowercase. I love Unify. Next, you can select the WAN IP address that is going to be hosting your VPN connection. In my case, I am choosing my WAN 1 IP address. And then scrolling down even further, we get to user access. Now, for the radius profile, we're just gonna choose default. And creating a 
something other than the default radius profile is gonna be beyond the scope of this video tutorial series. In most cases, just using the default user access list or the default radius profile is gonna be perfectly fine. But under user list, we wanna add users. So now I already have a user added because I've been already messing around with the client VPN stuff. But let's say I didn't have any users. I'm gonna create a new user here. We're gonna call this Sherwood2 and then we'll give ourselves a password. Once you've done that, just simply click create user and you're gonna to wanna to take note of this information because the users that you create here are the users that are going to be able to connect in to your remote client VPN from their whatever devices. If we open up the advanced section, we can see the subnet that we are being given for this client VPN. In this case, it's 192.168.2, uh, which is totally fine. The network size says 24. It's a slash 24 is what that means, or a subnet of 255.255.255.0. And it says that it's giving us 248 usable hosts. Uh, you can limit that down if you want, but for the purposes of this video, that's gonna be perfectly fine. Everything else down here, I am just going to leave default as I want to do the most basic client VPN setup that we can possibly do. I'm gonna now click add network. Okay, so successfully saved network client VPN. And we can see here that I have a 192.168.2.0 slash 24 subnet. And under VPN, there is a checkbox to indicate that this is a VPN network. The next thing that we need to do is set up our client device to connect into this VPN network remotely. And that's what we're gonna do next, right after this word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by the fine folks over at VoIP.ms. Now here at Crosstalk Solutions, we have curated a list of three main SIP providers that we recommend to our clients. One of those SIP providers is VoIP.ms. VoIP.ms provides metered pay-as-you-go SIP trunking services that are cost-effective and easy to set up. You can start making calls in as little as five minutes. VoIP.ms has more than 50 POPs strategically located around the world, and they can get DIDs in over 60 countries. Their platform also supports more than just simple SIP trunking. They can do SMS and MMS. They even have their own hosted PBX capability that allows you to connect your phones and devices directly to their services. We recommend VoIP.ms to our customers because their service is really solid and because the trunks are super easy to set up and use. You can even check out my video on how to set up and configure VoIP.ms SIP trunking using PJSIP on free PBX. So be sure to check out VoIP.ms. There's a link below in the description. All right, now back to the video. Okay, thank you so much for that. And now on to our client device setup. Okay, so I am going to be doing this L2TP client VPN setup from my iPhone, but it should be a very similar process no matter what kind of client device you're using. If it's a Windows computer that's somewhere remote or an Android phone or a tablet or something like that, it should all be relatively similar. So from the iPhone, I'm going to settings and I'm gonna click on VPN. So I'm in VPN and we can see that the only VPN that I currently have set up is private internet access. So we're gonna say add VPN configuration. For the type, we're gonna choose L2TP. For the description, we can say UDM Pro. And for the server, you're gonna to wanna to put your WAN IP address that we talked about a little bit earlier in this video. Here is a pro tip, however. If you have a dynamic IP address from your ISP, you can use something like dynamic DNS and then put in a fully qualified domain name here like home.whatever.com as a dynamic DNS name uh, so that if your WAN IP address ever changes, since it's not static, it's dynamic, if it ever changes, then the dynamic DNS name should update and you should still be able to connect no matter what your WAN IP address is. In my case though, I'm just gonna put in the WAN IP address because it's static and I know it's never gonna change. For account, we're gonna put in the username that we created in Unify. And remember the username that I created was Sherwood2. And then we wanna input the password that you created for the user that you created in Unify. Finally, for secret, this is the pre-shared secret that we created when we set up the VPN network. If you remember, I used I love Unify as the pre-shared secret. So we're gonna enter that here. And then we have the option of sending all traffic. Now what this means is, if we turn send all traffic on, 
all of the web surfing and Netflix and everything that we're doing through our phone while we're connected to the VPN is going to be going through that VPN tunnel and through the UDM Pro. If we turn that off, then only stuff that is actually destined for the UDM Pro network will go through this connection. We're just gonna leave it on though because turning this off is going to require some additional routing rules and stuff like that, which is a little bit too complex for this video. So we're just gonna say send all traffic and we're gonna say done. All right, so now we can see that I have two different VPN connections. I'm gonna select UDM Pro so we can see the checkbox is next to UDM Pro and now we're going to click on. Okay, we are now connected. Now, if you look at my phone in the top left-hand corner, we can see that we are on LTE, right? So I am not over Wi-Fi at all with this phone. Uh, I am going over LTE and we see a little VPN icon to indicate that we are uh, VPN protected, but going over the LTE network. Let's take a look at our IP address. Here we can see that the IP address that we received is 192.168.2.6. What does that mean? It means that we are successfully in the correct client VPN network. If we bring up Net Analyzer, we can also see that we are in 192.168.2.6. And if we go to Tools, we can ping some stuff. So if I say ping slash dot dot org, start, we are receiving pings from slash dot dot org, which means that DNS is working and the internet is working. Now, how do we know that we are the correct IP address. If I go to info and I look at my external IP address, you see right now it's not loaded. I'm going to click reload. Boom. And it gave me the WAN IP address that ends in dot 29. That is my static WAN IP address. I can also pull up a website such as whatismyip.com and here once again we can see that I have a WAN IP address that ends in dot 29. Going back to Net Analyzer, let's see what else we can ping here. So we should be able to ping the WAN IP address of our UDM Pro, and we absolutely can. And let's actually try to connect to Unify over this connection. There we go, I am connected to the UDM Pro, and this is not through Ubiquiti's single sign-in cloud login. This is through the VPN connection. And we know that because if I click on the little hamburger icon here in the upper left, we can see that I have a direct connection. So this is not a cloud enabled connection, this is a direct connection to the UDM Pro. Okay, so there you have it. We have successfully set up our client to server VPN connection from my iPhone over to the UDM Pro. There's a lot more to this. That is a very, very basic setup that will help get you going, but of course there's also all of the various firewall rules that you may wanna lock down the VPN users from being able to see other networks and stuff like that. Uh, by default, it is fairly wide open. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one.